Hollywood marriages are not always known for making it, yet singer Alicia Keys and her husband, producer Swizz Beatz, seem to be going against that trend. It's hard not to be curious about the dynamic couple's marriage, so here's a look inside their relationship. Alicia Keys and Swizz Beat's relationship didn't necessarily get off to a good start, but the two did meet long ago when they were just teens. As Keys shared in her memoir, More Myself, they first crossed paths when a mutual friend introduced them. Yet it definitely wasn't love at first sight. Keys wrote, We ended up in the same circles at various awards shows and industry events. He'd usually pull up in some fancy car, rolling deep with his Bronx crew and shining with diamonds. I wanted nothing to do with that scene or with Swizz. In fact, Keys revealed to Marie Claire UK that after she met Beats, government name Kasim Dean, she tried to avoid him. She told a reporter, Honestly, I didn't really like him that much. I thought he was too ostentatious. Swizz will have the fastest car, the biggest jewelry, the loudest jacket. Everything with him is really over the top. I used to see him and think, he is so annoying. Keyes also said she rejected the idea from her management to work professionally with Beats, who was a well-respected music producer, telling the publication, I fought it tooth and nail. Why should I work with him? Finally, though, we did it, and we had a ball. While Alicia Keys may not have been into Swizz Beats at first, the two seemed to really hit it off after working together in the studio. Keys revealed that it was then she finally saw a different side to Beats. In More Myself, Keys wrote that they had bonded over their experiences growing up in New York City. They also shared similar views from the work they each did with different charities. She wrote, The more we talked, the more I noticed how his mind worked. Beyond the baggy jeans and arm tats, there was depth. He was so aware of what was happening around the world. It was because of this that Keys agreed to have lunch with him, but Beats almost blew it. Keys explained, I made a reservation for noon at an outdoor restaurant in downtown Manhattan. Swizz was nowhere in sight. When he finally arrived at 12.20, Keys wanted to be mad, but Beats made up for it. Keys recalled how he, quote, lifted the mood with a steady stream of humor and fascinating conversation. In true Swizz Beats fashion, his proposal to Alicia Keys was over-the-top and crazy romantic. Just before her 29th birthday in January 2010, Beats proposed to Keys with a reported seven-carat diamond ring. Keys was spotted by paparazzi wearing the big rock during their post-engagement jaunt to Hawaii. And while her rep initially denied the engagement rumors to Us Weekly, a source told the outlet the couple was celebrating both their engagement and Keys' birthday. The couple ended up officially confirming their engagement months later, along with news that they were expecting their first child together. Keys wrote in More Myself about a romantic moment from their engagement trip where she believes their first son, Egypt, was conceived. In the book, Keys recalled how Beats told her, quote, I've always wanted you to be my canvas, and began using paints and brushes to illustrate her body. One thing led to another. When she later realized she was pregnant, she said, I wasn't exactly surprised. She added, As that winter gave way to spring, we relished two pleasures, the engagement and the pregnancy. While Alicia Keys and Swizz Beats don't usually hold back when it comes to discussing their relationship, their 2010 wedding was actually quite private. The two wed in front of close family and friends in a small ceremony in a private home on the Mediterranean Sea. The couple seemed to be even more excited for their baby that was on the way during that time. Beats told People, Whatever we're blessed with, that baby is being born to blessed parents. Alicia is definitely one of those great parents to be. She's super ready, super glowing, super happy. And even though the wedding was over a decade ago, for Keys, it feels like the two were just saying I do not too long ago. She revealed to Entertainment Tonight, It feels like two years. It goes by so fast. We are so connected and we have such a beautiful bond. Swizz Beats and Alicia Keys may have worked out their issues with each other, but the two still had to face a lot of drama once they officially got together. That's because during this time in 2008, Beats was still married to his first wife, Mashonda T. Frere, with whom he shared a son. T. Frere even accused Beats of cheating with Keys, writing on Twitter that the singer helped destroy her family. Beats and Keys denied having an affair, with the former telling Essence that their relationship didn't begin until months after Beats and T. Frere separated. Beats had also had a brief relationship with Jonna Sebastian, learning in 2008 he'd fathered a daughter as a result. Before that, he had a child, Prince Nasir Dean, with another woman, Nicole Levy, in 2000, which was after he began dating T. Frere. Eventually, T. Frere, Keys, and Beats reconciled and joined forces. T. Frere told People, It took two years into our blending to make it happen, but when we did, it was like turning the light on. We realized we could minimize the impact on our children by reducing the conflict we had with one another. 
It wasn't easy. It was a roller coaster ride. A lot of prayer, a lot of meditation. Clearly drawing from real life experience, Keys put out a song called Blended Family in 2016. Two years later, T. Freer released a book about co-parenting called Blend, and Keys provided the foreword. Alicia Keys and Swizz Beats share more than just their love for each other. The two are parents to multiple kids. Their first child, Egypt Dean, was born in October 2010. They then had their second son, Genesis Dean, in December 2014. As mentioned, Beats also has three older children from previous relationships. Keys said their blended family is large and loving. We love each other. I mean, we hang out with each other. We go to dinner together. Our family is one big, beautiful family. Motherhood has been good to Keys, she told Billboard. How you view yourself changes. I think that was the biggest change for me when I had my first son. I really kind of respected myself for the first time. She also highlighted what she's learned so far, saying, My children have taught me to not forget to be in wonder of all the things around you, not taking them for granted. It's so special. It's clear that music is a passion that both Keys and Beats share. Keys explained to Entertainment Tonight, Each of our first loves is music, and to be able to do that continuously and for there to be genuine love and real connection, that's incredible. Beats also opened up about how they inspire each other to Us Weekly, revealing, I think my wife inspired me to be a better artist just by letting me have my freedom. We let each other have our freedom, we don't own each other, and we just let things flow. We have fun and we support each other's passions. I think that's the key to happiness, honestly. They're also constantly cheering each other on and motivating each other to reach new levels. Beats wrote on Instagram, You shouldn't be jealous or upset if you have a queen that's successful, smarter, or better than you. What you should do is thank the most high or step your game up. Keys was also there to support Beats when he applied to Harvard. She told CBS, I was so excited. I've been so invested in this journey with him. While both Alicia Keys and Swizz Beats are successful in their own right, together they definitely make a power couple. When it comes to their careers in the music industry, they seemingly prefer to play to each other's strengths and make comparisons, Keys told CBS. I feel that one of the things that really works about us is we're very different. Even his style of music is different. We complement each other as opposed to getting in each other's way. We don't rock like that. Beats went on to explain how it's better not to compete, saying, That's an unhealthy vibe for any couple. You know, a lot of men are scared of powerful women. Beats not only inspired some of Key's romantic lyrics, but they've also teamed up in the studio, with him writing and producing several of her albums. Keys told Entertainment Tonight, For us to just both be at our height and place where we have really continued to grow and evolve, it is an honor to do that together and to be able to do that with our first loves. Outside of the music industry, Keys and Beats are major players in the art world. Not only was Beats named to the Brooklyn Museum's Board of Trustees in 2015, but the couple was also honored with a ball there for their creativity and support of the arts. The COVID-19 pandemic has been hard on a lot of couples, but Swizz Beats and Alicia Keys' relationship managed to survive quarantine. That said, Keys told People magazine that it did take some adjusting, saying, So much of our life is spent traveling. Obviously, with the pandemic, we're literally seeing each other every day. We looked at each other the other day and were like, so this is what it's really like to be married. While it may have been nice to be hunkered down together, they did find solo time, Keys said, telling the publication. One of the things we're really good at is giving each other the space that we need. And even just being intuitive about what each other needs is also something that comes really fluid for us. Yet the time together seemed to be a good thing for their family. Keys went on to share that they make a point to do things to experience life together outside of the digital world, saying, So we play a lot of board games, we'll watch movies together, we'll do bike rides and stuff like that. Alicia Keys was by Swizz Beat's side as they mourned the death of his good friend DMX. The rapper died of a heart attack in April 2021 at age 50. Beats took to his Instagram to pay tribute to his friend. Since the day that I met him, he lived his life for everyone else. Keys spoke to People magazine about how Beats was dealing with DMX's death, saying, It's always hard to say goodbye, especially too soon, and to someone that you love. My husband has definitely been doing really well with just talking through what he feels and talking about it with the kids and even on his socials. We're told that guys don't express their grief and that's such a lie. We've been talking a lot about just being able to feel how you feel and let that process and not rush that. It seems that the key to Alicia Keys and Swizz Beatz' relationship is communication and quality time. Chatting with Billboard about her marriage, Keys said, 
I think the most important thing in any relationship is presence. Being present and really choosing to make the time and take the time for the people that you love, not letting a part of your job be more important. And communication, really talking about who you are because we grow and we should be growing together. So you're both growing and both evolving and learning more about yourself and learning more about each other. Keys also revealed in her book, More Myself, that she and her husband try to stick to one big rule they made, writing, Swizz and I are striving to keep our promise never to go more than two weeks without seeing each other. Swizz has even flown from New York City to Sydney to be with me in order to keep that promise intact. She added that they also set aside a weekend each month to spend together. Their strategy appears to be working. Keys told People, We don't fight because we talk so much. We can both be genuinely honest. It's the first time I've ever had a relationship that has been so genuine. When it comes to their anniversaries, Keys and Beats love to celebrate with elaborate dates and romantic Instagram tributes to each other. The couple took a trip to Corsica in July 2021 as a way to celebrate their 11th anniversary by returning to the place they got married. Ahead of their 9th anniversary, the music producer told Us Weekly that they are spontaneous when it comes to these excursions, saying, "...we start with all these big plans and then might just end up sitting home, eating popcorn and just laughing, making jokes, then going somewhere at the last minute." It appears that adventures together have always been part of how Keys and Beats celebrate their relationship milestones. Even back in 2012, on their second wedding anniversary, the couple returned to their native New York to visit the Apollo Theater. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Nicki Swift videos about your favorite celebs are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.